China continues to insist that it was in fact a stray civilian weather observation airship. Its foreign ministry has released a statement saying that China strongly disapproves of and protests against the U.S. attack on a civilian unmanned airship by force. It also went on to say that American use of force is a clear overreaction and a serious violation of international practice. The BBC's Tim Ullman has the report. <laughs> All eyes had been on this solitary object floating serenely through US airspace. Was it a harmless weather balloon or a spy in the sky sent by the Chinese? Whatever it was, the American government had decided enough was enough. Look at that trail of white vapour on the left of your screen. That is a US F-22 fighter jet streaking towards the balloon. Then a second trail, this time from a Sidewinder missile, about to bring its journey to an abrupt end. <gasps> Whoa! Did you hear that? A few moments after the impact, the sound of the explosion can be heard at ground level. Then the remains of the balloon, its canopy torn to shreds, falls to the earth. A satisfying moment for President Biden, although he had to wait a few days for the operation to be carried out. Order the Pentagon to shoot it down on Wednesday as soon as possible. They decided, without doing damage to anyone on, on the ground, they decided that the best time to do that was when it got over water. In a statement, China's foreign ministry accused the US of overreacting. China expresses strong dissatisfaction and protests against the use of force by the United States. It added that it would reserve the right to make further necessary responses. The whole incident has caused tensions in what is an already delicate relationship. The US Secretary of State Antony Blinken cancelled a planned trip to Beijing this weekend as a result. The balloon is believed to have come down in relatively shallow water and any wreckage should be easily retrieved. The Americans hope they will then be able to work out exactly what the Chinese were up to. I mean, it's been issued by an angry Chinese government and you, you think this was supposed to be a weekend here in Beijing of building bridges between China and the US, not burning them. But now US Secretary of State Antony Blinken's trip to Beijing has been postponed and we have this serious point of tension. But in terms of the latest remarks from the Chinese government, they're describing the shooting down of this balloon as an attack on a civilian unmanned airship. The statement then goes on to again repeat the Chinese government's reassurances that this was a weather balloon which was accidentally blown a long way off course over US airspace that they'd called on Washington to act in a calm and restrained manner and yet they're saying despite that you've shot this balloon down this is a clear overreaction a serious violation of international practice and uh, the Chinese government says it will resolutely safeguard the legitimate rights and interests of the company which operates this balloon uh, and it reserves the right to make further responses if necessary. OK, let's let's take that last point, Stephen. Further responses, if necessary, what are they likely to be? What are we talking about? Diplomatic summonses. And, and what does that mean then for this warming of uh, tensions or rather warming of relations? That was the, the hope of the visit by Secretary of State Blinken. I mean, this is a, a kind of standard boilerplate line you get from the Chinese foreign ministry when the Chinese government is angry. It's deliberately vague, you know, to suggest that, well, who knows what we might do in the future, but it is a, a warning. And like I say, it's not specific to, uh, I guess it gives it an air of uh, mystery in a way, because, you know, who knows what we might do in, in the future in response to this. Certainly, though, it is not helping in terms of building relations between China and the US, which is supposed to be being repaired as we speak.
Yeah, Kim, I just um, came back from the foreign ministry's daily briefing where I asked them three questions about this alleged Chinese uh, spy balloon. What's interesting is the spokeswoman did not deny the balloon belongs to China outright. Instead, she gave this uh, rather vague answer, as you can see on your screen. She said, we are aware of reports of the balloon and are trying to understand the circumstances and verify the details of the situation. I'd like to stress that before it becomes clear what happened, any deliberate speculation or hyping up would not, would not help the handling of the matter. She added, China is a responsible country. We act in accordance with international law, and we have no intention of violating other countries' airspace. We hope relevant parties would handle the matter in a cool-handed way. So this uh, rather muted response uh, seemed to give some credence to the analysis by some U.S. experts that the revelation of this uh, balloon uh, was deliberate on the part of some U.S. officials to really put the Chinese on the back foot ahead of the uh, Blinken visit to allow the secretary to really address this, this issue with them more directly, uh, to confront them, to uh, basically tell them what the U.S. knows and what the U.S. would like to see uh, Chinese do. But it's also interesting that when I and other reporters asked the foreign ministry spokeswoman about if this uh, revelation would have any impact on this planned high-stakes visit, she dodged the question, simply saying she has no information or updates to announce. But the timing of this, of course, is what makes this very uh, delicate and also potentially uh, highly consequential because it really complicates things at a time when both governments, at least publicly, are saying they're trying to reset or at least stabilize this increasingly contentious relationship. And remember, this kind of incident really, uh, in, a, in a way, playing to the hands of hardliners on both sides. Already we're seeing uh, some members of uh, Congress in Washington calling for stronger actions and new briefings and you know, portraying this as uh, yet another example of uh, how President Biden's China policy uh, is being too weak. And uh, similarly, on the Chinese side, you could see this potentially uh, really uh, stir up more uh, nationalistic sentiment and feelings. And so, uh, you know, this obviously is not happening in a vacuum ahead of this visit. We're already seeing a flurry of, of activities on the U.S. part, uh, not only on the economic and technology front, but also in the military sphere in terms of shoring up its presence in this uh, region, including those uh, newly signed agreements with the Philippines. And even without this balloon revelation, uh, expectations are already very low about this visit in terms of concrete results out of the meetings between Blinken and uh, his Chinese counterpart, Kim. And with this revelation, um, I think it's just adding more uncertainty to this trip.